All right, so I'm picking up where I left off for the Archon quest. All fires fuel the flame. And we're going to go check out on the last patient that has uh, some mental thing happen to him after the abyss attack. What are you doing, Uncle Lin? Wake up! Don't you recognize us, my boy? <laughs> the abyss monsters are everywhere. Everywhere. They've taken over the tribe. No corner is safe. Did we lose the battle? No. It's pointless to think about that now. A warrior only has one job. Fight until the very end. Careful! He's not himself! Ho, oh, Kotlan! Get back. I don't think he can hear us right now. We need to get him under control. Let's go. Wretched Abyss! Get out of my tribe! Mom, Dad, are gone. Please, son, you've got to stop. You can't keep going like this. Wretched monsters. Give me my family back. Look, Uncle Lin, that's your father. He's standing right in front of you. Get out of my home. I'll never forgive you. Watch out. <laughs> I'm fine. Please, don't hurt my son. He's just trying to protect his home. Don't worry. We'll figure something out. Got him. What? What should we do now? He's different from the other two. It's like he can't hear us at all. He keeps calling us monsters. We're basically enemies to him now. And he sure knows how to fight. <laughs> Oh, Coatlin. He has a fighting spirit, that's for sure. But we can't keep him unconscious forever. I need to think. Abyssal corrosion syndrome. 500 years later, and it's resurfaced again. Huh? That voice, it's... The captain. So, you've seen this illness before? Direct contact with high concentrations of abyssal power causes irreversible mental trauma in most people. The exact presentation will vary according to trauma level. Some will suffer from superficial hallucinations and maintain the capacity to perceive the outside world. In such cases, verbal and physical interaction can be used to break through the hallucination. However, there are also those who are so far gone, entrenched in hallucinations so deep, that medical intervention is the only option. That's why we developed the Drought of Lucidity. The Draft of Lucidity? Drought, not draft. It's a kind of medicine that can dispel the psychological impact of the abyss. The treatment comes with severe side effects, including chronic migraines for the rest of the patient's life. So, it's reserved for the worst cases. This man is a devoted warrior, one not easily swayed from battle. That is precisely why it's so difficult to pull him out of this hallucination. If you trust me to be true to my word, give him this. Wretched monsters! Setting up an ambush! Give me your worst! It's either your end or mine! Hurry! He's awake! Please, give him the draft. My son thinks he's alone in this world. Why do they keep calling it a draft when it's called a draught? In his mind, all his family and comrades are gone, and only enemies remain. There's nothing more painful for a warrior than losing everything you fought so hard to protect. 
At the father's request, Ian-sen accepts the drop from the captain and quickly gives it to Okotlen. Monsters! Uh, uh, what? What's going on? I... Dad? What are you doing here? Ah, uh, my head hurts. I just had the strangest dream. I shrimp the abyss took over the tribe. It's all right, my boy. It was just a nightmare. Let's go home. You need a good night's sleep. But first, I want to thank you for saving my son. May I ask your name? For... <clears throat> just... Capitano is fine. I owe you more than words can say, Mr. Capitano. My name is Mune. You're welcome in my home anytime. Time to go, son. Can you stand? <sighs> He's already asleep! I'll help you carry him back. Traveler, let's meet up later. After the crowd disperses, the captain hands a few more doses of medicine. Gah! Thank goodness everything turned out all right. Thank you. You saved the day. Think nothing of it. I agreed to offer you my aid, so this is merely a part of that duty. Besides, I care deeply about this land. Right. When we were with Moika, you told us you and your soldiers defended Natland against the Abyss 500 years ago. That's right. My desire to protect this nation remains unchanged. When my platoon arrived in Natland 500 years ago, like you, we were true outlanders. But as time passed, I encountered the people of this land and witnessed their desperate struggle against the Abyss. Though many of the warriors were rash and inexperienced, they were steadfast and fearless in battle, willing to do anything to protect their fellow citizens. Oftentimes, with complete disregard for their own survival. Just as I fought for the glory of Conria, they fought for the survival of their nation. We happened to share a common enemy, so I decided to offer my aid. We fought side by side to the very end. I traveled to many places after that, but I never forgot this land. Even now, my work in Natland remains unfinished. Natlin hasn't forgotten you either. Why don't you want to use your name from 500 years ago? It may seem difficult to understand, but the reason is really quite simple. That name carries with it the glory of my homeland and the honor of Natlin. Yet, I failed to bring my soldiers home. And I failed to help Natlin defeat the Abyss. Your fault. The Abyss is way stronger than any of us imagined. You need not comfort me. I am no longer who I once was. Let the events of the past continue to collect dust in the annals of history. I will continue to help Natlan in my own way. Like, with a draft of lucidity? Who knew you could make medicine? Were you a doctor before? The drought was Guthred's invention. He was a respected military doctor as well as my trusted second-in-command. We faced a similar situation to what you witnessed today. The endless battles against the Abyss triggered delusions among the soldiers, to the point where some attempted to kill each other. In order to develop a treatment as fast as possible, Guthred used himself as a test subject. He passed away shortly after the drought was complete. Oh, that was the guy that possessed Auroron, wasn't it? That's who he was. Unrelenting in his pursuits. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice. In the end, he even gave himself up for a chance of success. I'm sure he would be pleased his creation aids people, even now. The Abyss has wrought enough suffering on this land. I sincerely hope this war will end soon. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice. Huh. That sounds rather familiar. Stop worrying about other people's survival, about their losses and sacrifices. You just need to win. That must be why I've returned. For this moment. 
Please finish what you set out to do, Commander. The soul that possessed Roron. That was Guthred, wasn't it? <laughs> You're more perceptive than I imagined. However, some things are better kept secret for now. We may be working together, but our goals are not entirely aligned. What's with the secrets all of a sudden? I'm not starting to think we should be more careful around you. I do not mean to jeopardize the trust between us. I simply prefer to keep this to myself, because it's a personal matter. All I can tell you is this. Natlan may have survived the worst of the crisis, but the souls of this land are still not at peace. And that is why my work is not yet done. Well, if it's personal, then we'll just have to trust you. If you have other questions, I'm willing to answer them. Wait, like anything? Hana wants to know how you eat with the mask. Anything you want to ask, Traveler? Actually, there is something I want to know. Natlan must pay the price for Mawika's use of the Ruler of Death's power. That price is death. And only Mawika's death can clear the debt. Even now that the war's over and the threat to Natlan is gone, it looks like that death is still set in stone. Could the captain know something about the Ruler of Death? I might not get this opportunity again. I should ask him. In the garden cultivated by the gods, flowers and weeds grow side by side. When the weeds compete for nutrients in the soil, the gardener intervenes to inhibit their growth. I'm not one to pass judgment based on my own standard of right and wrong. But it is an undeniable fact that she is responsible for my suffering, as well as that of my people. If that explanation is too difficult to understand, allow me to show you exactly what I mean. The curse of immortality. I don't know what I expected, but this is... The ruler of death can freely define the form of death, or grant immortality to anyone she desires. Her power is a rule in and of itself. Faced with such an overwhelming level of power, it can feel hopeless to resist. But I am of the belief that, in this world, no destiny is unchangeable, no death inevitable, and no rule unbreakable. So, before the final moment truly arrives, we must fight harder than ever. Hey, Traveler, Paimon. Sorry, I hope I didn't interrupt anything. After helping Okotlen back home, I went on a small walk and happened to run to a messenger from the Scions of the Canopy. He's been looking for you everywhere. Oh, did something happen? Apparently, Shilonin's ready to start forging your ancient name. She needs to check the progress of the Pilgrim's Chronicle, that device she gave you before. She invited a bunch of people to be there, including me. So let's head to the stadium once you're done here. This is a critical time for you, Traveler. It's best not to delay, so let us end our conversation for now. Best of luck to you all. Goodbye. What a mysterious guy. Still, he doesn't seem quite as intimidating as before. We're basically combat rods now, right? Anyway, let's head to the stadium. We shouldn't keep everyone waiting. So in the end, the captain still hasn't told us his real goal. He kind of reminds Paimon of someone we met recently. Oh, right, the Lord of the Night! They just seem so tired, you know? Since they've both been alive for many centuries, do you think that's just what happens when you've been alive for too long? I wouldn't doubt it. Oh wait, did I switch back to healing items or did I still have my box? I still had my box. Boop. Okay. Sure took your sweet time. Wretched scoundrels! How dare you keep the almighty dragon lair Kuhula Howl waiting? 
Kneel before us and apologize or we'll... <laughs> Kadeech. Don't listen to him. We just got here too. Kadeech, Kachina, Mualani? Woo, everyone's here. Reunited at last. Did you miss us? I brought candy and cookies to share. Of course we missed you. Ooh, you brought swords crackers too? Score! Ugh, just in time, traveler. It's so stifling in here. I was just about to go outside to get some air. It's the same temperature outside. Anyway, how was the trip here? Pretty smooth. Huh, to be honest, I also didn't expect this many people to show up. A third of this amount is more than enough for my plan. Why do you need them here? I need to ask them about you, gather their thoughts and hopes. That will help the formation of your ancient name. Oh, uh, you brought the Pilgrim's Chronicle, right? Yeah, let me, uh, let me take a look. Hmm, okay. The progress looks good. We have enough people. So, let's get started. Sorry I'm late. Chaska! Chaska showing up late for something? That's a first. I had to follow a group of monsters further than expected. When I got back, I heard about what you did for my tribe. Thank you. Yeah, Traveler deserves most of the credit. Plus, if it weren't for your help during the battle, the Collective of Plenty would have suffered a lot more. We had the manpower to spare, so it's only right we returned the favor. We were just doing our part. We're glad everything worked out. <clears throat> okay, let's save the pleasantries for later. Everyone's here, so let's get started. All right, let me remind everyone what's going to happen. I need each of you to stand before the Pilgrim's Chronicle and share your stories about the Traveler. Your words will be recorded and become a part of the Traveler's ancient name. Any, uh, questions? Nope. All right, then to start things off, uh, hold on. Remember what we discussed? Oh, right. I almost forgot. Uh, Traveler, Paimon, you uh, can't be here for this part. Huh? But why? We want to hear what everyone has to say. I need people's true thoughts and feelings. It's best if the subject in question isn't involved. It's much more difficult to express those feelings to someone's face. People get shy in those situations. It's, yeah, it's just how it is. You're right. Just like when Paimon doesn't have enough more to pay for her meal, but she's too embarrassed to tell the traveler, so she has to make up some excuse. Paimon, I don't think that's the same. <laughs> so basically, you want us to leave the Pilgrim's Chronicle here and wait nearby? Oh, don't worry. This shouldn't take long. Everything Shilonan said made sense, but did you see St. Lolly's reaction back there? She was definitely the one who decided we should leave. Hmm. But staying out here is just making Paimon even more curious about what everyone's gonna say. Anyway, you're gonna have an ancient name soon. Ooh, that's so exciting! Feels like we've been in Natland for quite a while already, doesn't it? We've been traveling together... Travel... We've been traveling together for even longer. You're right! If only Paimon could say a few things about you and them. Well, looks like you're about to have that chance. Shilonen, is everything all set? Almost. We're just missing one last thing. You've been by the Traveler's side the longest, Paimon. We need to hear what you have to say. But Paimon's not from that land. Oh, it doesn't matter. As a Traveler's companion, your contributions are extremely important. You're the perfect person to finish the story. Sorry, Traveler. I just need to borrow Paimon for a second. It, it should be quick. <sighs> that took longer than expected. Did something go wrong? Paimon gave us a lot. Whew. And I mean a lot of information. I'm not even sure the Lord of the Night managed to get all of it. Already? Here, you can have the Pilgrim's Chronicle back. I'll need it when I forge the name, but you can continue your adventures in the meantime. And when the time comes, I will forge you an ancient name unlike anything that's come before. So that you, Moika, and Natlin as a whole, 
can finally put an end to this endless war. All right, so we finished that part of the storyline. Is that the only one there is? Seems like it. That didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would. So that means now I can work on other things. What do I have in here? What do I have in here? Oh, over here. Ah, new one's been added. The hand of U Uzo, filled with strength and power, is extended to all who are lonely and sorrowful. All right. Collect. All right. So that just leaves me with these ones. The event, which I need to record as well. Uh, so you buried by Ash. That's one of the quest line things. And this. But what I want to do is the event, which I'll do in a separate one. And then the stuff for here. For that quest line to unlock the tribal stuff there. So that's going to be it for now. And I'll see you guys later.